My sister, motivated by jealousy, attempted to damage my reputation at school by spreading a malicious rumor. Consequently, I chose to sever all contact with her. The situation escalated when she endeavored to sabotage my wedding by attempting to steal my fiancé. In response, I decided to expose her behavior publicly. I am a 27-year-old female who hosted a rehearsal dinner last evening in anticipation of my wedding tomorrow. However, the event ended on a decidedly sour note, and my mother is extremely upset due to a certain incident that transpired during dinner. This incident culminated in my decision to exclude my sister from the wedding, which was perceived by many as humiliating for her. I seek to understand whether my actions were indeed justified, or if I am, as my mother insists, at fault. Allow me to provide some context regarding the relationship I share with my sister Jennifer, who is two years my junior. For reasons unknown to me, Jennifer has harbored an intense animosity toward me since she was 15. Prior to that age, although we were not particularly close, she at least refrained from acting against me. Our father treated us equally and would reprimand Jennifer whenever she antagonized me excessively. However, my mother always displayed a certain leniency towards her, perhaps because she was the younger sibling. Whenever conflicts arose, my mother would invariably advise me to let matters slide, urging me to act with greater maturity due to my seniority. Unfortunately, my mother has not outgrown this partiality. Jennifer and I continued to quarrel for years until I finally severed ties with her during my senior year of high school while she was a sophomore and quite popular among her peers. Out of nowhere, Jennifer decided to spread a baseless rumor, falsely accusing me of theft, resulting in significant damage to my reputation. This period was especially trying, as numerous thefts had been reported by girls from various grades, which were later attributed to a newly hired janitor, not me. Jennifer, however, insisted on propagating a rumor that labeled me as a kleptomaniac, exploiting her popularity to ensure its swift spread. The ensuing bullying and name-calling drove me to frequently skip school. Unable to tolerate the false allegations, I embarked on a quest to uncover the origin of the rumor. To my profound shock, I discovered that Jennifer was responsible. Feeling betrayed, I confronted her publicly in the school cafeteria, demanding to know if she had indeed started the rumor, to which she nonchalantly replied, Yeah, so what? This response incited me to reveal several of her secrets in front of our peers, effectively turning the tables on her. Our relationship deteriorated further following this public confrontation. Upon returning home, we engaged in a heated argument, during which we exchanged harsh words. It almost escalated into physical violence, but our parents intervened just in time. From that day forward, we ceased all communication, despite living under the same roof, and we have not spoken to each other for over ten years. During visits home from college, I meticulously avoided any interaction with Jennifer. Our visits to our parents' home were carefully coordinated to ensure we would not cross paths, a tacit agreement honored by all parties involved. This arrangement persisted until two years ago, when our father tragically passed away from an aneurysm. His passing brought us together for the funeral, and we decided to set aside our differences to support our mother. For the past two years, Jennifer and I have made an effort to coexist, at least during holidays, for our mother's sake. My fiancé, Jacob, played a crucial role in easing the tension during these family gatherings. Following our father's death, the relationship between Jennifer and I shifted from overt hostility to a semblance of tolerance, albeit strained. When I became engaged a few months ago, my mother persuaded me to invite Jennifer to the wedding. Initially reluctant, I was eventually swayed by Jacob's suggestion that this could be an opportunity to mend our fractured relationship. Though I did not include Jennifer in the engagement party or the bridal shower, events reserved for close friends and family, I decided that extending an invitation to the wedding was a conciliatory gesture. Upon receiving her invitation, Jennifer expressed her gratitude. Despite these efforts, the incident at the rehearsal dinner has reignited old conflicts and cast a shadow over the upcoming nuptials. I now find myself questioning whether my actions were justified or if I acted harshly, as my mother claims. Despite the circumstances, she expressed her gratitude for my willingness to put past grievances behind us. Given her behavior, 
I had no reason to suspect ulterior motives. It has been a decade since the high school incident, and it seemed reasonable to assume that everyone would have moved on by now. Presently, my fiancé, our guests and I, are staying at the hotel chosen as our wedding venue, situated a short distance from the city. We have been here for two days. The majority of our guests arrived the evening before yesterday, and we hosted a welcome party for those who traveled from out of town. During the party, I observed Jennifer being quite social and seemingly enjoying herself. She even took numerous photos with me, which made me feel confident in my decision to invite her. However, this perception changed the following morning. In the middle of the night, my fiancé, Jacob, came to my room, presenting a letter that Jennifer had sent to his room. Due to our parents' superstitions about bad luck for the couple to stay together before the wedding, Jacob and I are in separate rooms on different floors. It was around 1 a.m. when Jacob knocked on my door. He handed me the letter, and I immediately recognized Jennifer's distinct handwriting, realizing that something was amiss. Jacob explained that he was preparing for bed about 15 minutes before when a hotel staff member delivered the letter to him, mentioning it was from the occupant of room 306, Jennifer's room number. Though she did not sign her name, it was apparent the letter was from her. She seemingly did not anticipate the strong and healthy relationship Jacob and I had, a misjudgment on her part given our impending marriage. The letter, intended to remain a secret between her and Jacob, contained shocking content. Despite her outwardly normal behavior, Jennifer had expressed deep-seated animosity towards me, distorting past events to cast herself as the victim. She alleged that I instigated hostility without cause, bullied her, and spread malicious rumors in high school, leading to public humiliation and our subsequent estrangement. Furthering her fabrications, she claimed I harassed her whenever I returned home from college, ultimately causing her relationship to end due to my advances towards her boyfriend. She portrayed herself as traumatized and tormented by our interactions, asserting that her attendance at the wedding was solely to prevent Jacob from making a dire mistake by marrying me. Shockingly, she insinuated a willingness to elope with him, believing that their reunion was a destined opportunity. To verify these unsettling claims, Jennifer suggested meeting Jacob secretly after the rehearsal dinner in the parking lot. Upon reading the letter, Jacob was visibly disturbed, feeling sickened by its contents. He apologized profusely for encouraging me to invite Jennifer, not foreseeing such a betrayal. We had hoped for reconciliation, assuming maturity would have dispelled past grievances. Infuriated by Jennifer's duplicity, I devised a plan to expose her deceit. Jacob agreed without hesitation, repelled by her manipulative behavior. The plan was simple. Jacob contacted Jennifer, agreeing to her meeting proposal and specifying a signal for her to leave the gathering. After dessert, Jacob requested a whiskey on ice, prompting Jennifer to excuse herself to the ladies' room. We then publicly announced the existence and contents of the letter, inviting anyone with doubts to join us in investigating Jennifer's whereabouts. Accompanied by our guests, we proceeded to the parking lot, where Jennifer, expecting only Jacob, was momentarily stunned by the unexpected confrontation. Upon realizing the gravity of her situation, akin to a deer caught in headlights, she finally gathered her senses and attempted to flee. However, her efforts proved to be in vain as the truth was already known to everyone, and we had achieved our original objective. The ensuing chaos was substantial, with no clear course of action. Consequently, I directed everyone to return to their rooms, except for my mother and my in-laws. Together, we proceeded to Jennifer's room, uncertain if she would be present. Fortunately, she was inside. We knocked several times before she eventually opened the door, her face visibly red and blotchy. Upon seeing me, she attempted to attack, but Jacob intervened and restrained her. I firmly instructed her to leave immediately. Jennifer did not respond verbally. Instead, she retreated inside to continue packing her belongings, which she had already begun. My mother was particularly distraught, experiencing an emotional breakdown in Jennifer's room. She questioned Jennifer's motives, given our collective belief that she had no genuine affection for Jacob and merely sought to create discord against me. Jennifer offered no explanation and silently continued packing until she departed. 
After her exit, there was little left to discuss, prompting my in-laws to retire for the night. However, my mother detained Jacob and me, expressing her understanding of our anger towards Jennifer's actions, but condemning the manner in which we had handled the situation. She remarked that our actions were unbecoming and juvenile, suggesting that I should have addressed the issue with Jennifer privately rather than creating a public spectacle. I felt a surge of indignation, perceiving my mother's words as an unjust stand in favor of Jennifer. I voiced my frustration, accusing my mother of always siding with Jennifer and caring solely about her feelings despite Jennifer's culpability. My mother, however, conceded that Jennifer's actions were indeed reprehensible and regretted pressuring me into inviting her. Nonetheless, she maintained that my retaliatory actions were unwarranted and had tarnished our family's reputation. She argued that my public outburst had not only embarrassed Jennifer, but potentially made our guests uncomfortable, thereby marring the wedding event. Despite my mother's reasoning, I remained resolute, justifying my actions as a necessary means to retaliate against Jennifer's attempt to sabotage my relationship. Subsequently, Jacob and I returned to our room. The following day, which was a day of respite between our rehearsal dinner and wedding day, I conferred with my maid of honor and several bridesmaids to gauge their perception of my actions. They acknowledged that while my response to Jennifer might have appeared extreme, they believed it was my prerogative to handle the situation as I saw fit, given the circumstances. Nevertheless, my mother's silence since the incident left me with an uneasy sense of guilt. Reflecting on her words, I recognized that my actions might have been somewhat impulsive and juvenile. Despite my desire for retribution, I began to question whether my approach had been appropriate. Eventually, I confided in Jacob and resolved to address the matter with my mother. Later that evening, Jacob and I visited my mother's room to reconcile. She welcomed us with a hug and apologized for her earlier remarks, admitting that she had not considered my perspective. Acknowledging the outrageous nature of Jennifer's letter, she conceded that while she might have handled the situation differently, it was ultimately my decision to act as I did. I, in turn, apologized for my harsh response and admitted that she had a valid point. My mother also expressed regret for historically siding with Jennifer, which had contributed to my feelings of alienation. She revealed that she had severed contact with Jennifer and would not speak to her until she offered a sincere apology to both Jacob and me. Our conversation concluded on a positive note, discussing our excitement for the impending wedding. This reconciliation gave me a sense of relief and helped me approach my wedding day with a clearer mind. A week after the wedding, I believed the ordeal with my sister was over. Jennifer had been duly humiliated and removed from the wedding, leaving no reason for further confrontation. However, she reignited the conflict by posting on Facebook, falsely claiming that her suggestion for Jacob to leave with her was motivated by my alleged poor character. She insisted that Jacob had subtly indicated dissatisfaction during their encounters, which was an outright lie. Knowing that Jacob's loyalty was unwavering, I found it perplexing that she continued in her attempts to undermine our relationship. Since I had blocked Jennifer, relatives had to notify me of her post. Fortunately, those who knew the truth about her letter swiftly came to my defense, discrediting her claims in the comments. Overwhelmed by the backlash, Jennifer eventually deleted the post. Jacob and I found some humor in the situation, but it was evident that Jennifer's persistent actions were not only damaging her relationships, but also her reputation. Considering suggestions from others, I reached out to my mother to uncover any underlying issues that might have contributed to Jennifer's animosity. My mother recalled that Jennifer had confided in her about feeling overshadowed by comparisons to me, largely stemming from a secret relationship she had at 15. The boy she dated had continually compared her to me, exacerbating her insecurities. Unbeknownst to me, this relationship and subsequent public humiliation during a high school incident had left lasting scars on Jennifer, leading to her resentment towards me. While it is too late to alter past events, I hope that, in time, Jennifer and I might find a way to reconcile. For now, I am focused on my future with Jacob and look forward to our upcoming honeymoon, hoping it will serve as a welcome distraction from these familial conflicts.